Imagine a whole lake rushing down a mountain at once, carrying ice and rocks along with it. This is a glacial lake outburst flood, or a GLOF. Global temperatures are rising and glaciers are melting worldwide, which many believe contribute to such occurrences. The flash floods in Sikkim, which has so far caused at least 40 deaths, was due to one such glacial lake outburst flood caused at the South Lunak Glacial Lake in North Sikkim. On the intervening night between the 3rd and 4th October, heavy rains caused the swelling of the South Lonak Lake, which subsequently led to flash floods in Sikkim and some parts of Bengal. The surge of flood water flowing into the Tista River Basin in Lake Kin Valley was so intense that it washed away several bridges and roads and rammed the biggest hydroelectric project, the Tista 3 Dam in Chungthang in Sikkim, causing part of it to give away. According to a statement issued by the National Disaster Management Authority, the flash floods were the result of a cloudburst causing the Lunar Glacial Lake to overflow. The events were rapid and unpredictable. Army vehicles were swept away, 23 personnel were reported missing, and some vehicles believed to be submerged under the slush. GLOFs usually result in more damage and destruction than other kinds of floods caused by excess rainfall alone. The 2013 Kedarna disaster was another devastating example of GLOF caused by the overflowing glacial lake up in the mountain, resulting in 6,000 fatalities. Overall, the devastation in the downstream areas of the river Tista is immense. Now that we have got a picture of the full scale of this tragedy, let us understand through experts whether such a tragedy could have been avoided. In 2020, a study highlighted South Lunak Lake as one of the 10 lakes posing significant GLOF threats among the 36 glacial lakes in North Sikkim. The study categorized these lakes as hazardous based on various geological factors. Furthermore, it has been observed through several studies that South Lunak Lake has been expanding over the years, a phenomenon attributed to climate change. Consequently, glacial lakes connected to these glaciers have been expanding as well. Research indicates that South Lunak Glacial Lake in the Upper Tista Basin is increasing at an average aerial rate of 0.03 square kilometer per year. The 2020 study revealed that between 2000 and 2018 alone, Lunak Lake grew by 0.205 square kilometer, underscoring the impact of climate change on these natural formations. In the graphic on your screen, you can see the pink line indicating the size of the lake in the year 2000 and the size of the glacial lake in 2018. Not just that, in his column for the Wire Science, Professor C. P. Rajendran points out that other studies that had predicted such a disaster. India's Himalayas house approximately 9,575 glaciers. These glaciers are retreating at a rate of 5 to 20 meters per year. Satellite data reveals a 13% loss in glacier area between 1960 and 2000. In a 2019 science advances study, 650 glaciers in India, China, Nepal and Bhutan were confirmed to be retreating due to global warming. The Himalayas experienced a notable temperature rise of 0.66 degrees Celsius since 1991, surpassing the global average. This warming trend resulted in warmer, wetter winters over 25 years and contributed to extreme rainfall events such as those observed in Himachal and Sikkim. In fact, warnings were raised as early as in December 2021. In December 21, the Indian Institute of Science published research on South Lona Glacial Lake revealed a shrinking glacier, reduced from 6.4 km to 5.1 km in 29 years. The overall glacier area decreased by 0.96 square kilometers, while the lake expanded remarkably from 0.42 square kilometers in 1990 to 1.35 square kilometers in 2019. So, does this goes to show that all the danger signals were ignored? A decade has passed since the Kedarna disaster and another devastating experience of glacial outburst in another part of the Himalayas perhaps points to the fact that not much progress was made on predictive capabilities. CP Rajendran in his article writes, Why didn't the authorities do much on this front despite ample warnings on the GLOF potential of the glacial lakes in Sikkim given by the researchers. The environmental impact of construction of dams also has been ignored by successive governments. The Chungthang Hydro Dam is a crucial component 
of the 1200 megawatt Tista Stage 3 hydroelectric project, which was developed by Tista Urja. This project was commissioned in 2017 at an estimated cost of Rs 14,000 crore. The construction process of this project had involved blasting activities and the boring of tunnels. Environmentalists have been expressing serious concerns about the construction of large-scale infrastructure projects in the eastern Himalayas, particularly the building of multiple dams. This region is situated in seismic zones 4 and 5, which are known to be highly susceptible to earthquakes. Now that we have spoken about the environmental impact the glacier flood has caused, we shall take a quick look at what is happening off the ground. The Chief Minister of Sikkim, Prem Singh Tamang, said that if the previous governments had constructed the dam properly and if standard work had been done, the force of the water could have been controlled. The Tista River flows through Sikkim and West Bengal before entering Bangladesh. Numerous houses, hotels and tourist facilities are understood to be affected. West Bengal, Siliguri and Jalpaiguri districts are also part of the red alert that has been issued. Evacuations are in progress for residents living near the river and in the hill areas. It has to be noted that Home Minister Amit Shah approved the release of Rs 44.8 crore as an advance amount from the central share of the State Disaster Response Fund to Sikkim on Friday. But no such announcements were made for the state of Bengal. West Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee accused the Centre of Discrimination Against Flood-Affected North Bengal, despite it undergoing a situation comparable to neighbouring Sikkim. Banerjee emphasised Bengal's assistance to Sikkim but demanded equality and non-discrimination central aid. She stated that her government had sent Rs 25 crore aid to Gorkhaland Territorial Administration with ministers and officials working around the clock in flood-hit areas. Despite similar crises in Darjeeling and Kalimpong, Banerjee expressed dismay at the centre's unequal treatment and urged fair disaster management support. All things apart, the Sikkim disaster has once again turned our heads to phenomena of global warming. As CP Rajendran writes, the eastern Himalayas require special attention in terms of potential for earthquakes as well as flood disasters. A special effort needs to be mounted to develop hazardous scenarios and models as well as land zonation maps that demarcate areas prone to floods and landslides. There should be a serious rethinking of the developmental models for the Himalayan states in the context of climate change and the earthquake potential, while also bringing the major stakeholders the people on board for their feedback. That's it from me today in this video. My name is Zeeshan Kaskar and you are watching The Wire.